Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 165. This episode is with the absolutely incredible human being that is Jennifer Hale. My goodness, was she a joy to chat with. You probably already know her talent, but you are about to get a glimpse into her beautiful soul. We had such a blast hanging out. So much so that we were literally crying from laughing so much. In this episode, we talk about so many things. We talk about how we see the world growing from trauma, when her interest in acting started, her love of music, finding your truth in your art, how she came up with her incredible passion project, Skills Hub, a beautiful story about traveling to Thailand, being a world record holder, and so much more. You're in for a treat, my friends, so buckle up for a good time. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 165, with Jennifer Hale. Theme song time. Series a thing, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, she's a thing. Ask her what oh. zero divided by zero is. And oh, I'm zero, writing it down. And what zero times zero is. What? Zero divided by zero and zero times zero. Different answers. Done. Yeah. Done. It's, it's good. It's good my, stuff. My voice is an Irish man. So now I'm double excited about it. <laughs> oh, I love that. I have I have a British woman. Actually, I have an Aussie woman because I miss that part of the world so much. Ooh, that's a good yeah. one. I immediately was like, I got to. Got to get something in here. Let's see what we got. And then I saw Irish. I was like, what? I do want someone to tell me to turn right up ahead. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to switch up Irish for a while. Just yeah. <laughs> Scotland would be fun. Ooh. Take the bloody right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You did the wrong turn. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I'm excited. I, I can't remember. Did I talk to you about Skills Hub before we set this up? Uh, I, I've been in the beta since like it launched. I think so, we talked about that. I have so many people I'm talking to. Like, yes, you're in the beta. That's right. Okay. So excited. I think uh, when I got to the the catalog that shows like who's signed up, I was like one of 15. I was like, oh, so what a great idea. So I'm <laughs> thank you. Super excited. I'm I'm really excited because like I, I've taken a bunch of acting classes in the past and then I took um I got that master class that Samuel yeah. Jackson did. Oh. and it was oh, it's so good. It's so it has informed so many things of like the way he sees things and he breaks down his process on like how he works and it's really, really good. I'm gonna have to do that. That sounds like fun. I'm telling you, it's so good. And one of the things that he talked about was like when you take an acting class, he's like, be aware of who's teaching it because you want someone who's actively working and doing it as opposed to somebody who did like a guest spot 20 years ago. Yeah. And I immediately thought of that when Skills Hub popped up and I'm like. This is what he was talking about. <laughs> you want yeah. to someone who's doing it in the time to know. It's wild. Yeah, Such a great I'm so idea. Glad. I'm so glad. How's your day going? My day is great. My day is amazing. Are you kidding? I can walk and talk and pee on my own. Everything else is gravy. Yeah. Um, yeah, my no, my day is great. It's the weather's gorgeous today. I'm very beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I feel like we have a very similar outlook on life, which I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy a lot. Like, Thank yeah, you. Could be worse could always be yeah. worse exactly you know? it's the there's a pony in there somewhere story right there's, that's right always have you heard that story oh yeah oh yeah, yeah I, love that one. I love that one. fantastic okay we, which leads me to are yeah. you watching ted lasso uh, not yet brian i, I know no I know. no brian no i don't I knew this girl. was gonna come up <laughs> i do not fan girl over anything and i've become a freaking yeah. psycho ted lasso fan oh I, my god I'll I am excited too. Lasso on Twitter. Like, yeah. Listen, hey. I'm into it. I, um, I like crying in oh. any sort of art and media. <laughs> I just look for an excuse these days. <laughs> Actually, so. Ted, I only cry. Well, the, this episode in particular is about standing up for what's right. And I think uh, that's what got me about yeah. it. Yeah, it, I'm in. I cried in Wonder Woman. Says, Let's oh, do yeah. it. Oh, yeah. it. It's called, yeah, okay, look right, right now. No. Yeah. It's called Do the Rightest Thing, this episode. And it's just, Ooh. God, it's beautiful. It's just, and the way they wrote it, there's no remorse. Really? And it's just oh, cool. like, yeah. 
There might be a little from one corner. Yeah. And all, like, oh, Jesus. All your money just left. Bye. That's right. <laughs> but but um, it's really, really, I can't wait to see what they do with it. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Oh, cool. I love that kind of stuff. It's, it's a special kind of like emotion you get when it's like crying for a good thing. I yeah. notice that doesn't happen anywhere near as often as the other side of the coin. It's a joy cry, right? Yeah. Fierce joy cry. Yes. Nothing I love like it. Fierce joy cry. I love it. <laughs> Eddie the Eagle. I'm like, when he yes. lands it, boom, I'm in. <laughs> uh, my favorite is when, you know, he goes from the, takes that big breath that transfers the belly from the yes. belly to the chest. Yes. <laughs> yes. And exhale. Okay. It's gold. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. I think mm-hmm. of that. I think of, yeah, Wonder Woman. What, specifically, I remember being in the theater when, they're like, this is not why we're here. And she's like, this is why I'm here. Takes the cloak off, goes up in an unmanned ah. land. I'm like, ah, why am I crying? <laughs> <laughs> it's not sad. It's an inspire cry. You're yes. watering the planet so that inspiration can seed. Yes. Can take hold. It's I, magic. A, that leads me to another proverb that I just adore. It's Give it called, to me. I want it. They buried us. They didn't know we were seeds. Ooh, Boom. that's a tattoo. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Think, where do we want to get it? Get it. Uh, get good it. question. I don't have any. Okay, I, we'll start with this as, one. I'm as yet, as yet uninked. I'm gonna wait for a special decade in my life and then begin the ink. Ooh, I like yeah. it. I my like aunt it. got her first tattoo. I think she was it was her 60th birthday. Hell yeah! She used to watch. She was a single mom. My she and my cousin used to watch. Um, when they grew up. They used to watch cartoons when my cousin was little. So when awesome. they grew up, they would hang out and watch SpongeBob SquarePants. And so she got Patrick the Starfish tattooed on yes. her back. Yeah. That's the coolest <laughs> aunt I've ever heard of. <laughs> I keep waiting to run into, into, into Fagerbaki to tell him this story. But, uh, you know, COVID, I haven't. So Sure, sure. I, you know, I didn't realize you were Canadian. I didn't know I, that. I'm a dual citizen. I'm, I'm not, su- a, I'm not yeah. surprised. I, I'm not surprised. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a dual citizen and I... Honest to God, in my soul, I'm a citizen of the, of the world. And that, yes. even, that feels small to me even. But I love that. I are, agree. We're all one organism. Like, yes. you know. <laughs> totally yeah. agreed. We're all yeah. people. It's, that's what I've learned in the last, like, six years of doing this show, talking mm-hmm. to so many different people from all different walks of life. Yeah. We're all entirely different, yet exactly the same. Yep. And it's fascinating. It is. It is. It's it really, wild. It is. We're it's all wild. branches of a tree. Yeah. And like, it's so it's like esoteric to say, but like love really is that thing. It's this extra weird power. It's It's, wild. It's all there is honest to God, right? I mean, if we want to go there, we can go there. Let's do it. My acting teacher, his mentor, um, Roy London, who taught some incredible actors of modern film. It was the methodology. I've taken a lot of different acting classes and a ton of different approaches I've been done since high school I went to a fine arts high school for theater and we studied the Stanislavski and the this and the that and then mm-hmm. the Meisner came along and you know yeah but this, Roy's approach was really beautiful and he broke down scenes and said you had to figure out first if it was a love scene or a power scene and then you would go Ooh. accordingly but apparently on his deathbed he said they're all love scenes oh it's like who knew he knew. Okay. Okay. You get, close to, <laughs> you get close to the mothership and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot. Thank yeah. you. I remember now. Yeah. There's the so, truth inside. Got it. And everything is that right? Because yeah. you, the, I think know, so. That thing of, okay. Okay. If you could have a, one, only one superpower, Ryan. Oh, okay. What would, be, what would you uh, superpower? Teleportation. Okay. So Brian yeah. wants to teleport. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mine is, I want the ability to simply point at someone and send a little special ray that has them understand the thing they hate the most, like deeply understand it. Because when you understand something, yes, you can't hate it anymore. Right. Disagree with it. And it can piss you off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hate it anymore. Cause you have a visceral intern as an empath and I'm a (laughs) pretty hardcore empath. I'm with you. You, yeah, you get that. It's impossible to explain to someone who doesn't have it, but you get that physical take on what someone else is experiencing. It's literally in your body all of a sudden. You're like, yes. ah, I'm, I'm becoming another person. Ah, get out. You know, yes, yeah. you ah, this have, is heavy. <laughs> you don't have a lot of control over it, right? Or you're like, yeah. okay, gotta go, gotta go. Didn't, and it's not like so and so called Susan at this hour and said that. You don't yeah. have <laughs> the content. You don't get right. the content. 
Like, don't worry. I don't know your private, private, private life that way. Right, right. I just, I get the context. I get the the feeling of what you feel. Yes. Like, completely it resides within me for a moment or longer. Yep. Like, and that, like, I've been in some hairy situations. I grew up with many different kinds of abuse, right? Sure. I'll never forget. I was at the effect of, of one of them. <laughs> it was... Whew, it was intense. I was in the process of losing about a third of my hair and I was mm. calling out, you know, for help. And I, I had the capacity when this person put their hand over my mouth to, to bite the living crap. Yeah. Out of them. Like not just the bite enough to get away, but like really seriously injure them. And yeah. I was, no, because I knew how it would feel. Oh, so I did boy. just enough. Sure. And then that away, right. Like, and and I've been in arguments with people. I can't, I don't in my private life deliver the kill shot. I'll deliver the truth. Yeah. yeah. But I won't deliver a vicious kill shot because I know what it feels like. And I also yes. know that we're always laying karmic eggs. Sorry, I hit my own microphone. We're always <laughs> laying karmic eggs. I was pointing Absolutely. to all Absolutely. out. I'm the same you know, way. I'll yeah, hit this and, so many times. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought maybe you laid eggs too, but um, yeah, anyway. I do sometimes, sometimes <laughs> only on the solstice. <laughs> <laughs> While dancing backwards and yeah. spinning yourself so you don't know which way is which. You've so. seen it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like what you put out into the world matters. Yes. You know, don't st- Thank I, my, you. my kid was having a fit. We were on a ferry one time coming up to visit family here on on the island as i call it and uh he was i mean he was like three or four years old or something and he got pissed off in the play place and he was all like nah, having a fit and I, just, <laughs> I picked him up i was gonna like say something i'm like nah i just picked him up i'm like his front he's got the intelligence of our dog right now because sure when you get mad that's what you have right so i just picked him up and carried him out of the space and i was like we'll hang out here till you're done no go yeah. ahead <laughs> get it out go and then I, I, he did it again. And I picked him up. I said, bud, you're stinking up the space. Yeah. <laughs> you out. Let you do your stinkies out here. Okay. Right. You know, and I think about that, like, don't stink up the space. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm the exact same way. It, yeah. It's it's a weird thing. I don't know. Maybe it is the trauma. <laughs> We're like, maybe well, you, the trauma is our like, teacher. The tra- you, yeah. You can I like mean, find those boundaries of like, I know yeah. what's on the other side of this, but then it takes like a cognizant power to not go over there. So yeah, I, I feel you. It, I and feel- sometimes I, th- I think the heart of the trauma, the more that gets wired in. And Definitely. I, think, I know I was blessed with, with have, having that horrifying experience and it creating also a sense of compassion at the same time, not revenge. Yes. Yep. You know? Like, sure, mm-hmm. I was pissed off. But then one day, I remember, never forget, I was nine and I was like really angry. And I thought, oh my God, I'm being her. Yeah. I'm being just like the abuser. Right. And- I was like, whoa, 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 which of course then birthed this <laughs> really terrible drill sergeant in my head. <laughs> it was a total a-hole to me. Anytime I stepped out of line and created this entire line of self, you know, self-criticism and self-abuse. And uh-huh. I, I started Thanks. unpacking that later. I was like, oh, you line of teachers, you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're made of the same stuff. We're we made are. Of the same stuff. I can tell. I can tell. Do you, you know that Buddhist thing about you? I, oh God, I hope it's the Buddhist. You know, I'm not that informed. I'll spout stuff and please sure. Me neither. I'll just take it. Like, I think it was them. Maybe it was my neighbor. I don't know. That's right. Um, Is your neighbor that? a Buddhist? Let's combine them. <laughs> Some of my closest and dearest friends are. Yeah, um, and uh, um, but you choose the family you're born into for what they can teach you. Yes. Yeah. You know absolutely, that one. Absolutely yeah. agreed. And so this stuff comes along. I'm like, okay. What did I pick? I picked what? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, that, one, that one's on me. That one's on but... me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody please go back in time and smack me upside the head? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I just learned, kid you not, three weeks ago, what blood is thicker than water. The full saying is, did you know? I don't what? know it. Inform me now. Get ready <laughs> to feel lied to your whole life. I'm so- seated. You've oh. heard the blood is thicker than water, right? To Julie show said when the, like, someone wants to manipulate you, yes, go correct, ahead. right? Exactly, <laughs> right? It's like, oh no, it's about family. If you keep going, it's like blood is thicker than water, but oh, you know what? I'm not going to misquote it. I'm going to straight up look it up right now. Straight but essentially, it. it means the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, get ready. So they just finish their sentence next time yes. they put it on you. <laughs> yes, just wait for this. Okay, because it's it's a little wordy. So it is. 
Wait for it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Blood is thicker than water, but the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Meaning, the I family it. that you choose is stronger than the one that you're automatically born into, which is the opposite of what it's used for. And I was like, Interesting. wow. Interesting. Wow. I also heard that differently too, though. I heard that is but meaning we can kidnap you out of your family and brainwash you to do whatever we want. Yeah, that's the other fortune cookie. That's where the numbers are on the back. Don't okay, do that one. Okay. It's the other one. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about take down the take down the establishment because same. I same. remember yeah, I remember being in university and I'm a bit older than you, but I remember looking around and going, Holy gods, seeing what the corporations were doing and going because I, I started out with a theater scholarship in, in, in college. Fantastic. Yeah. I can and, see it. Well, well, and then I and then I was like. I was such a half baked. I'm not going to swear, but a half bleat. You can. Um, <laughs> I have it's a kid. I'm asking him not to. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> we'll have I, him do I'll, it. And when he starts no. swearing, then I'll be back to my sailor mouth. You know, perfect. We'll be um, back. We're, we're watching um, Stranger <laughs> Things right now. And everybody's like that kid, D oh, Dustin, swearing up a the storm, cracking up and <laughs> Shane's cracking up. And he's like, I know, mom, I won't. I'm like, I know. Um, but anyway, um, what was I talking about? I just rabbit <laughs> rolled myself out of my own conversation. Jesus God. Um, I have ADD. Uh, oh, this yeah. is the yeah. same. <laughs> Welcome to the ADD show. Yay. Right. <laughs> What's that? Okay. BFFs. <laughs> BFF. What was the other letter? Yeah, we'll, oh, we'll hey, who's out. that? Yeah, yeah exactly. You I'm, talk I'm too? <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm so sore from working out. Now my sides are really hurt. Um, my uh, yeah, we'll go down the rabbit hole of workouts. But um, we're here. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're going in. We're going in, Jennifer. It's just me and you. Listen, you mentioned the word audience. I don't have one of those. We don't, there's nobody coming on this train. It's us. <laughs> oh my god what were we doing okay hold on i'm gonna go back there i'm gonna claw I think it was my something back. philosophical but who knows <laughs> <laughs> it was about oh yeah i was uh, um here we I go half baked it i i learned i just knew i couldn't go to a regular high school because i was in a really not good way by the sure. time and we moved like late night move from cincinnati uh ohio back to birmingham alabama and my mom went into a bar to catch up with some friends and I sat in the car. It was like one in the morning, memorizing my, my audition monologue for 9am the next day oh. for the fine arts high school. And it was the skin of our teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I got in by the skin of my teeth. I think I got in like on probation. Like, I don't know. Damn we right. Tell. You did. There's something there, but we, I don't know. I love it. So, yes. Yeah, so, and I did not feel, I was not the one who got cast all the time. I was not the one who, I wasn't the star of the theater department. I didn't, sure. you know, and, I actually started singing in clubs the next year. I was like, oh, or maybe cool. when I was 15. I started singing in rock clubs in a rock band. Dude. It was super dude fun. And I'm, that's my first love is singing. Right. And, yeah. uh, and so, but I remember when it came time to go to college, it was like, Oh, what are my options? All right. I need to get a scholarship of some kind so we can afford it. And I was like, okay, I'll audition for this. And I memorized Clytemnestra, a monologue from Clytemnestra oh. from Agamemnon, which is it. people who don't know this whole thing. It's like super Greek, super heavy. And Clytemnestra is the mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was here. I am, I think I was like 16 or 17. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll do it. Perfect. And I memorized it. And I remember I'll never forget it. It was the first time the, the channel opened up the first time the flow set upon me in acting in a yeah. I've had it in music a lot, but in acting, it was just like, what just happened? I disappeared and something took over and oh. did that monologue for me. And I was just like, I was out of body. I was like, what just happened? Yes. And I looked around and people were like, whoa. And I was like, okay, uh, okay. Anyway, I gotta go. I gotta, yeah. I'm over <laughs> I've always been over scheduled my whole life. Right. And, um, that's how my attention thing manifests itself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no. Same. Um, same. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, they gave me the biggest theater scholarship they had and I did it for a while, but this style of acting just, it didn't, it wasn't my zone. It was very, very presentational and very, very over the top and on stage. And I couldn't find my truth in it. I just yeah. felt like I was fakey making it. And I was like, I can't lie. I can't get up here and lie. I hate this. So sure. Much. What do? Yeah. But I took really cool courses at that college, like Eastern religions and other stuff. And right on. Yeah. And economics, micro and macroeconomics, which is super interesting to me. And um, and then I was like, OK, I, I got to leave the theater department, but I can't afford school if I do that. So I'll go to this local university where my mom works and I'll get a broadcast degree. And at the time, I was already working at a video production house and right <laughs> on. 
to for the whole semester people are like why are you getting a broadcast you're already in the industry yeah. and i was actually <laughs> at this point i'd been doing commercials for a few years like already oh really I started that when i was in high school yeah yeah i got a job working at a video production house and in my teens and then the audio studio next door asked me to run over and record a valley girl because i could of course Oh my god, a toddler. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> then that probably sounded like this. Then oh my god, like toddler. You know, yeah. <laughs> teenager, right? Of and, course. Um, and then uh, they paid me thirty or thirty-five dollars, and I was obsessed. I was like, okay, wait, 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 what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I I got these guys to be my mentors, Greg and Courtney, and I made my demo over and over and over because there's that learning curve in the beginning, and mm -hmm. and then I went door to door cold calling ad agencies to build my business, and all yes. this while I was in university and playing in the rock band, and you know I was so tired, and uh, <laughs> so I, I'm at UAB, and I, so I switched over from broadcasting to this is all coming back around Here to. We go. Um, um, business. So I have a business management degree. And I remember sitting in there and learning all this businessy corporate -y stuff and just going, just hearing this in the background. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, it's not going to go well. How is this, this is wrong. This thing's, they're doing these things to the planet and to people. And everyone's like, yeah, are you going to study for the test? I'm like, no, you guys don't see that. <laughs> I'm like, what? what are you talking about? I might as well have been going, there's the matrix. And everyone's like, she's right. Stay away from her. You know, she works. She's doing too many different things. She's obviously fried. That's right. Um, she's a weirdo who sings in rock clubs. I don't know what her deal is. <laughs> Somebody so, took the blue pill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah. So I, um, but I've, I've seen anything to take down the establishment. Hell so, yeah. We circled back. I rock got back. star. I We're here. <laughs> I'm so glad you're driving because we would never have made it back if I was. <laughs> it's all up here, Brian. It's That's all right. up here, man. Teach me. Teach me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know what? That does not surprise me at all that music is your first love because I've listened to never way more times than I'm going to admit. Oh. You are so in my wheelhouse. You have no idea. I, have you heard Sea of Stars? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank it's you. all so like you just have an incredible voice just thank you base level it's thank already you. incredible but thank your music and it you. just feels like i feel like we consume art the same way and that like you can feel a heart yeah. in it like and you can tell when it's there and you can tell when it isn't and like there's something there and everything that you've done that i've ever consumed there's that there's that heart there thank which you. is just it's magic thank it's magic you. thank you <laughs> because you're the one that made it and put it out and got, I got to experience it. So I appreciate that. It I, I owe, you're into it. Thank you. I owe a great debt to one of my oldest and dearest friends. Um, God, I've never named his name. I think I'm going to name his name. Ooh. Ooh. His name is Chris Helland and he's a doctor, Chris Helland, I think. Very he's cool. uh, now a professor at Dalhousie in uh, Nova Scotia. And he does uh, some quite a bit of work for the Dalai Lama as well. Oh, cool. And um, he's a wonderful human being. And way, way back in the mid 90s, when I first started in LA, I we were hanging out somewhere in, I think, Montreal. And I was bemoaning the superficiality of my career choice because he was studying theology. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. He was studying theology at like McGill or something very impressive. And I was like, I should be helping the world. I'm, right. <laughs> the world. <laughs> I'm useless. And he was like, just stop. He said, told me this concept of divine spark and i'll probably butcher it but this is how i remembered it because i'll such, take it my butcherization has been handy for me <laughs> which is that um when you do something and you're sitting in kind of the highest and best place in yourself which is not necessarily a serious place it's just a place of feeling good and enjoying yeah. what you're doing, being your best self that your divine spark is alive in that space and when you record at the time, way back in the 90s, we used to record on um, tape, you know, and they cut it with a razor blade. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> you do. Wow. And then, uh, no, you're lying. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, just, I'm just old inside. You're like 20. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> well, um, so uh, the um, he said, imagine that your spark alights and sort of travels physically on the recording and then when that recording is broadcast, whether it's on the radio or through a game or through a TV or whatever, let's say radio and someone's riding in their car and this is back when commercials used to play all the time. Sure. And you had, you had no choice, you had to listen to the radio. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, 
And he said, someone's just sitting there and that they're maybe they're stuck in traffic and they're not even paying attention, but that spark is there and travels through and alights and hits them in their being. And they might even not even be paying attention, but it alights and lifts them just slightly to align with their own highest and best place. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that. That'll be my life right there. That's it. Boom. <laughs> so, we got it. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Bye later. You know, I yeah. love that. He's right. It's absolutely true. And it's like, if you can find a way to, I guess you first have to find your spark. And then once you hone that, then you can sort but of funnel it, it. It's not an outward looking, it's an inward. Yes. It, it actually, that spark lives in what's your jam, yes. which lives in caring enough about yourself versus caring what other people think. Yes. Find your jam and enjoy your jam, whatever that jam is. And not to tell yourself that that jam is not enough or not the right jam or should be a different jam or yes. should be strawberry when it's blueberry. Like whatever. That's true. I hate it yeah. when that happens. You know? Yeah. <laughs> we had, we worked actual jam into that conversation. Yeah, we did. Good. We're here. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> Welcome to the jam sesh with Brian and Jen. Mm, where's my <laughs> toast? Gluten-free, please. <laughs> It's true. I, I love passion. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's magic in a bottle. And so I will listen to somebody talk about something they're passionate about, even if I have no clue or interest at all, because yeah. there is that you can get bogged down by so many outside influences and things that when you find your jam and you're like, Oh, I don't even, I don't, I don't know anything about fly fishing, but I'm about to learn everything. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got for me? Yeah. Craig? And that's, you know? yeah. That's kind of this, this whole last couple of months has turned into that for me because yeah. I've lost two things in this, in the last 60 days that are my jam. And, yeah. you know, one is my Patreon where we are like, you know, fight the power, take it back, take your life back. Let, you know, right. Get you, let's get you back up on your feet. You know, that's yes. my, my Patreon is the Haven. Um, and I then the it. other, yeah, I love that space. The other is, um, thanks. And skills hub happened because you know we used to go into places and audition with human beings and they would tell us what to do and they'd be like yeah you're on it or right no, do, that. do it this way right thanks for and your then, time yeah and then they're like oh just send an mp3 and i'm like nope 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 i'm gonna i'll go to my agents and they'll direct me and and, and it was like yeah they're too busy and it's a really long drive all right i'll direct from home and i would overthink and second guess and just be like ah i just want five minutes with someone i trust Yes. And then the pandemic happened and like, okay, everyone's on their own. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, Jeez, if I could just get five minutes with anyone I trust. Yeah. And, um, and that's how it happened. And I had the idea probably, it was, gosh, it was two and a half years ago. And then last year I, at a barbecue at my sister's house, Perfect. I met Bill Reed, who is a oh, brilliant fantastic. developer, brilliant developer. He developed, um, he was like, I told him the idea. He's like, I like that. I was like, cool. Design. And then a couple weeks later, he's like, hey, I want to ask you about this. And I'm like, oh, my God, he really did like it. And then <laughs> he did 50 plus hours of one on one beta testing with coaches. Wow. Yeah. Coaches, actors at what we call level one, which is total, mm -hmm. total newbies. Level yep. two has been doing it for a little while, but haven't quite cracked it. And yep. level three, which is I'm a working actor like he and, and coaches like hours, yes. and hours and hours of beta tests with these people. And we would have meetings every week or two, just like hours of ideas and reviews and redoing. And then we finally launched in yeah, June. You did. Which was so exciting. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And then I've just discovered this new thing that's making me crazy, which is Ooh. I just found out. OK, OK. So we realized in, in early right after we launched, like there's all these indie developers out there. Yes. Who are, maybe they're hobbyists or they're brand new or they're, you know, a small little company and they throw their stuff on these casting sites. Right. Yep. And they get act. Maybe they've, it's somebody making something in their basement in Florida or in their kitchen in Omaha mm -hmm. or whatever, or in, in, you know, Zimbabwe. I talked to a couple of killer guys from Zimbabwe. Oh, so something cool. it's Awesome. And they need actors, but they have to go and post. And then I just found out today these actors have to pay a part of their salary to wherever they got the thing from, like a commission. And I was like, what, mm. what? So mm -hmm. we've built this thing called the Opportunity Board. Yep. And on the Opportunity Board, it is completely free for devs to post. And actors don't pay us anything out of what they make. Just go get, go have an audition and have a good time. Yes. You know, you're talking about passion. And my, I have always been a connector. I, like, Tom, I, I feel it. Yeah, Tom Kenny used to make fun of me. 
somebody would walk in like, I need a painter. I'm like, I got one. He's like, she's got someone for everything. <laughs> like, I do. Thanks, Tom. What do you need? Nothing. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. So it's, I just, I love connecting people and I love breaking down barriers. Yes. So many people are like, I don't know how to get started. And D Baker made that beautiful site, which is, I want yeah, to he did. To come, right. The best. And, oh, it's wonderful. And then sometimes people need more direct information. So we've set up a thing where people can come in and they can book just 10 minutes with one of our coaches who's available to the new people and just say, I need a recipe. Mm -hmm. Help me make my personal roadmap of what's my first step. What's my next step? Cause yep. so when people coach with me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to fire hose you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <That's how I am. laughs> Good. And you're going to go absorb it all and shake it off. And I want you to go find two other coaches who coach this and this. And then Beautiful. hit me back when you're done. Cause I've, I've given you all I can give you right now. Go right. Some more and then come back to me. It's, it's great. It's like a, a buffet, you know, yeah. one restaurant and have just one meal. And sometimes you really want that. Like you yeah. want that six week deep dive with somebody, but when you just need, like, I just need like a, a little help here, a little help there. Like I want to, I'm a working actor and I just want to check out audiobooks, see if I even want to do it. Right. Or I want to be better at my D and D game with my friends. We had somebody yes. come in and book that and they had a blast. Of and course. It. Like, yeah. Anyway. So that's my, obviously my passion because I won't shut up about it, but I, I love it. it. I love it. I'm so into it. And it's, there's nothing like it because you've, you've bite-sized it, which normally like I've taken acting classes. That's like, okay, on this Saturday, it's hundreds of dollars. You're like, all right, cool. And then you walk in, I'm like, I already knew like half of that. Like, oh man. So when I saw your thing, I was like, and who, who's on this? What do you, <laughs> what? How did, okay. <laughs> wow. And you can bite-size it because you can do an hour, you can do 10 minutes and it's like, whatever you need. It's such a genius idea, especially for voiceover. Cause it's such, also, I find that a lot of information depending on, cause I come from the on-camera world. So I've yep. done that for like seven years and I just dipped into voiceover like two years ago. Oh, so wow. I'm starting like, okay. So information is also really hard to get in a lot of ways. Cause they'll say, get coaching, but yeah. you'll never get recommendations on where to get coaching, how, who to talk to. So you've democratized the information. Which That's is what I do. breaking them barriers. How I see what people? you're doing. <laughs> well, we it. actually, we have a few coaches who are on-camera coaches as well. And we are probably rolling out a lot more of them before the end of the year. We're working on a partnership right now that would bring in a ton of on-camera coaches. Also, though, we've got people like Elias Ufexis is absolutely yeah. brilliant at on-camera stuff. He knows... He, his interview, well, this is a whole thing. We have this library where I'm sitting down slowly one at a time recording mm -hmm. you know, 15, 20, 25 minute interviews with our coaches. And I get to ask people from LucasArts and DreamWorks and Netflix yes. and Amazon and Disney, like, okay, you get how many auditions? Yeah. Okay, so for those <laughs> 90, 300 auditions you get for this single role, what has you listened more than 10 seconds? Yes. What do you wish actors would stop doing? What do you, you want them to do? Very more important. <laughs> I can, I can, I'm like, oh, things I wish I could have asked 40 years ago. Like, woo. Yes. But, um, I, I, I did fine. I did okay. Fine. And um, very, yeah. Anyway, no complaints. But um, I'm excited to be able to pass that on to other people. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Happy. I yeah. love that. And one thing I'm really excited about, we're recording tomorrow. Well, I won't time date this, but we're recording a conversation with um, people who work on the union side of the business and people mm -hmm. who work in the non-union side of the business. We've got a casting director and a really prolific working actor from the non-union community. And then a couple of my, I've been in both camps and we're going to talk about wages and working conditions for everyone. Oh, like cool. if you're not union, yeah. how do you take care of yourself? How do you make sure what's everybody charging? <laughs> you yeah. know, can you just lay it out there, please. Yes. So how do we link arms and become a community and a united front, whether or not, you're in the union. How do yes. we all know we're kind of like standardizing like and start getting buyers to kind of expect, you know, outside the wild west world of somebody in their basement doing something. Sure. How do we get people to expect like, okay, I, this is what actors cost. This is what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. how do we help people understand like, okay, I'm brand, brand new. I'm not going to get to the $200 an hour place yet. But so sure. people starting out are, are kind of generally getting this. And these are the terms, like they don't get it forever. They can have it for five years or sure. Oh, maybe I have to give it away forever in the beginning. Like mm -hmm. all these questions. Oh, yeah. these questions to delve into. Yeah, I love it. And I, I love looking at people's lives and like getting to know them and talking to them and like pairing threads, because the fact that you went to school for arts, but also finance, 
that it's mm-hmm. so hand in hand with oh, you've yeah. got the show and the business, yeah. which is not as common as it should be. Oh, well, uh, that's actually what had me start. I had this podcast for a while, um, a very mm-hmm. short podcast. I only did like seven episodes. I'm not like a real podcaster. Um, but oh, I would just yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I would go to conventions and, you know, make the promoter give me a room for an hour and a microphone and some chairs. And, and I called it, first I called it the art of money. And I was like, oh, it's so heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like adulting with money. Oh, that's taken. Okay. Beyond money. I don't know. Still, whatever. Anyway, just money. Let's just come talk about money. Boom. And um, just money. Hashtag. Yeah. And yeah. And I really love it because it was people obviously, you know, in those situations from my fan base. And it's one of the things we talk about in the Patreon. Yeah. Um, it's really important to me. I look at money as a table and yeah. it has four legs in my frame or just to create a frame so you can kind of travel in it. One sure. is knowledge and we're not given knowledge for very specific reasons you know? uh-huh you, you're right oh yeah because yeah. when like our current educational system has its or- origins in the victorian era yeah when great britain ran the world from a tiny little island in the atlantic mm-hmm. you know and and how do you do that without computers you standardize reading writing mm-hmm. and math and you create a giant human supercomputer but yep. you don't tell them how it works mm-hmm. that would not go well for you the smart uh-huh. ones will take, do it yeah. and they'll, they'll <laughs> hamilton you, you yeah know? right they'll be outside <laughs> yeah and uh on your door going i'll take this now yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah so that's the first leg is knowledge and once you have knowledge you can make a plan but in between there you do need to know what you want and that's really what we break down in the patreon is is yeah our pillars are um number one is reconnecting you to your gut to your instincts because Love we it. have been branded and marketed to so much. We're separated from ourselves. Yeah. N- nutritionally, honestly, like mm-hmm. our body's not meant, there's not, not a lot. You walk into 7-Eleven, there ain't no food in there. It's true. It's <laughs> there's true. stuff, but there ain't no food in there. That's right. <laughs> your cells are like, no, no. You know, and your, your programmed chemical brain's like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, what, how um, big do they get? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um that leads me to my puppy but we won't scroll that right now <laughs> so you got knowledge and a plan and um oh i started on the patreons the first leg is connect you to your gut second is what do you let's get you what you want and that that's what made me think of this is do you even know what you want yeah have you decided what you want's unacceptable you know have you said oh i should want this are you shooting all over yourself as they say mm-hmm. um so and then the third leg of what we do is we're the ones we've been waiting for. Like no one's doing this for you. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So, so back to money. So the first leg is a plan. The second leg is, sorry, first leg is knowledge. Second leg is a plan. The third leg is habits. Um, Smart. Because when you get those tiny habits in place, it's that dollar a day thing. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to learn a new skill. Um, I mean, I bought this gorgeous guitar behind me. <sighs> 20 years ago and i did not put a dollar in the bank every sure. day I was like, here's a dollar in february here's yep. two dollars in march and i put six in april why can't i play like jimmy page you know because like, he has at least ten dollars come every on every day every minute in the bank right so so i was like oh well I, you know i still love on it and write with it but it's sad there's anyway, time there's time i believe I, in you you know there is time because i'm gonna live yeah. a long time yeah, all right are. so knowledge a plan habits and then mm-hmm. being being is the real soup. It's this massively oversized leg, and you get it, Brian, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's where you come from, you know. For everyone listening, it's it's where you come from. It's the culture you live in. It's all these weird beliefs you have about money that you don't even have. I remember early, early on talking to somebody, you know, and I say this on my podcast. I say this in my Patreon. I am not a coach. God knows, I'm not a therapist. <laughs> I'm not a financial expert. I'm a human being who had a mm. rough road, did a, spent a ton of money on healing. <laughs> yeah. Still do. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, and I've made terrible decisions and really good decisions. And if I can save anyone, any road rash along the way by sharing my experience, woohoo, that's yes. why I'm here, you know? Yes. So that's what I do in there. Yeah. But same being is really interesting. I had this guy one, one of my very first times I ever did this and it was on the phone and, um, and he was mad. He was deeply mad. Beautiful person, uh, trans person of color, mm-hmm. and talked about people with money like they had shot his dog. Ooh. And I said, I said, here's the thing. 
I said, you have every right to how you feel a hundred percent. Like, absolutely. Also consider that when you speak this way about people, what you're telling your unconscious is when you have things, people are going to speak this way about you. Mm. It's not safe to have money because you will be dissed on like this. You'll be ragged on in this way. And it's important to start to speak about money like it's your friend. Because if you talked about your friends the way you talk about money, would you have any? That's a good point. So, yeah. It's a yeah. good point. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hard lessons learned. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's... <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, no, I've always loved money since I was a kid. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about money, but I love what it, the possibilities that it provides. Sure. Like, I, I remember I went to Thailand in 2006. Oh, what? I had, yeah, I had, um, I did my first convention and it was in New Zealand and it was extraordinary. Oh, awesome. And I went to, I, I literally had this giant wall of the world on my map. Yeah. I, sorry. Map of the world on my wall. Yeah. It's the same so, to me. I've been doing that, <laughs> you that too. I've been doing that so much. Lately. I'm like, wow, I think I'm super over scheduled because my words are all mixing up. Um, up mixing words, yeah. um <laughs> so I had this big map of the world on my wall. And I sat, I literally sat there. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to New Zealand. And I hung up the phone and I stared at the wall and I was, I closed my eyes. I literally closed my eye, covered my eyes and I shot my finger straight ahead and wherever it landed was where I was going to go. I love and it, it was Vanuatu. So I was like, Ooh. okay, let's go to Vanuatu. And yes. it was, it had to be like physically near. I made sure my finger landed somewhere sure. near New Zealand. Not the ocean. Yeah. I was like, no, I can't go in the ocean. I probably yeah. did that once or twice. So I was like, Jesus, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I had just gotten back from that amazing experience, that huge gift. And um, the, yeah. And I got back to LA and I, I, I did not feel well in my head. I felt depressed and unhappy and I had in quotes, everything. And I thought, okay, it's time to go volunteer. Yeah, there you <laughs> yeah. go. It's like vitamin C to someone who has scurvy. Just go give for a while and you, yes. find yourself, you find yourself again. You find your soul again, right? I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I went on this website. I kind of searched and searched and it was um, it was vfp.org. I was like, okay, I'll try this one. Oh, it has a really easy to use matrix. Well, what happened was I had all these singing sessions booked for the show called Class of 3000. Mm -hmm. And Andre Benjamin of Outcast was our lead and Ooh. he had yeah, it was, we had so much fun. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. Um, he had some, fan yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, um, he had some <laughs> fancy stuff come up and, and, and canceled everything. So my two weeks of my schedule was suddenly crystal clear. And I was like, Oh, look at it out. I'm going right. on. I'm <laughs> what do I do with I my hands? Bye bye. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, um, I went on this website and I really wanted to go to Africa. That's where I really wanted to go, Ooh. but what was available in the time block I had was Thailand. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I really had a burning desire, but uh, okay. I, I got to go volunteer. Yeah. So I volunteer to teach English in a school, which if you can play Pictionary, you can teach English. Fantastic. And I did not speak any Thai, which was really clear when um, <laughs> I had to figure out how to get from the airport to the train station. I was like, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And you, know, you, go to, you go to Europe or any of these countries where it's all based, like we all come from that root of Latin, right? Right. You're like they've got letters I recognize. It's fine. Sure. And I'm that's riding an down the road and I'm the stinkiest person on this bus because I've been on the plane for like <laughs> seven hours. But everyone there is crazy clean. Like <laughs> crazy clean. I was like, oh my God, I'm so horribly smelly and awful. <laughs> and and they I, I'm sitting on this bus and I'm watching signs go by and I'm like, oh my God. It was curly cues. I was like, oh my God, I literally know what it's like to be illiterate. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even tell you. My grandfather signed his name with an X. He couldn't read or write, and I was like, "I get it, Grandpa." Sure. Oh my God, I'm living your life right now. I'm an ignorant, stinky person in the middle of nowhere. What am I gonna do? And I gotta catch a car ride from these people at the train station. I don't know where it is, and it's not a town. No, that's not a town. It's just a building. Maybe that's a town. It looks like town has two buildings together. Well, look how judgy you are about this culture. I don't know. I'm just trying to find my place. <laughs> I'm looking, you know, the thing, the thing. <laughs> so long story short, um, I did it and I found it and I got there and it was extraordinary. And I remember it was hot as hot as bejesus there. And I was late November and I thought, oh my goodness, what do these guys do in the summer? Because yeah. we were in the same hemisphere, but near the equator. And 
I was in this the library, which was a big old, not that big. It was a little warehouse with like the vaulted ceiling of the metal ceiling of a warehouse. And I was talking to one of the teachers and we took a break and I, I said, um, you know, gosh, it's, it's warm in there. And <laughs> she was like, oh yeah. And she said, we're saving up to get fans for that. We want to get us, a, a, you know, a little drop ceiling and some fans. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So yeah, we're on a, we're thinking about a year and a half. We'll have saved enough. I was like, oh, cool. I said, how much is it? And what, what, what's your target? What's your savings target? And she told me, and I was like, oh, and then I snuck off and found a, a way to convert that from Thai bot to um, us dollars and just about fell over. Really? $182 and change. 180, 182.50 or something. Wow. So I, I didn't want to be the insulting, you know, white person going, I'll give you some money. That's right. So, I have so many fans right, right? here. <laughs> Jesus. So I, I kind of waited and was like, I need, can I get to an ATM? I just got to stop by. I got to get some stuff. And, sure. and I got to the ATM and I pulled it out of the ATM and I stuck it in an envelope and I waited and I just quietly gave it to her. And I was like, hey, I hope this is not presumptuous. I just wanted to share this with you guys to get some fans. And yeah, she's like, oh my God. And she freaked out and had like a <laughs> ceremony with cakes. And I was like, ah, and one of the other girls contributed too. And and I was just like, oh, no, no, oh. Oh, this is so embarrassing. And, and then I found out, through, she emailed me after I got back to the States and she was like, the monks got so excited that they donated enough to make the drop ceiling. And the shopkeeper was so excited who had the fans. He gave us six, eight for the price of six. So now we're just oh. set. And all the fans are up there and they had their white fans with my name on them and bright red letters. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I just started to just quietly play. Sure. Oh. <laughs> but. It was really neat because then I just, I mean, I'll never forget coming home from that trip. And it was again, seven, no, it was 15 and a half hours going there. It was 17 coming home. Ooh. And uh, this friend of mine picked me up at the airport and, and I was starving up to that 17 hour flight. And sure. I, cause I've always practiced, not always, but since mid nineties, I've kind of, you know, it's gone from being intermittent to being really fairly constant. I practice a healthier form of eating that isn't always available in, in airport. Sure. Sure. <laughs> shops, And I don't always plan well. So I'm like, yeah. eh, I'm, tired yeah. of nuts. I'm so tired of nuts. I don't want to eat another nut, please. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I, and I've already sinned with two bags of chips today. I can't, right. you know, so, I've got so, nothing left. <laughs> So we stopped at Whole Foods and I was like, oh, I'm in LA. Ah, that's jarring. That's jarring. And, um, and then I, cause the energy of LA is intense. And I, yeah. I stopped at this Whole Foods and I, I, I literally walked to the door and I couldn't physically go in. It was like this wall of energy just hit me. And instantly that empath brain kicked in and I connected to everybody in the store who were all busy on their way to something and had no idea how much they had yeah i had just come from a place where kids would walk around staring at the ground like deeply passionately looking for something around dusk mm -hmm. and i finally asked what are they doing they're hunting for rats and lizards to cook for supper Damn. and there were lovely happy kids lovely yeah. wonderful kids, like living a for them you know a really a life that they very much were in, it was difficult and they were enjoying it sure and i walk into this place and people are like ah I feel the discontent. I feel the impatience. I feel all of it. And I'm like, Oh my God, you have no idea what you have. Yes. And I, I was like, my eyes were full of tears and I could hardly talk. And I was asked my friend, I'm like, can you just go get me a bowl of this? And the thing of that, I, I know it sounds stupid, but I can't go in there right now. I just can't do it. Sure. And um, so that was like what money can do. And I, I was able to connect with two kids from that three kids from that community. One of whom really wanted to go on to high school but her family couldn't afford it. They needed her to go to work. And sometimes mm. when you go to work in a developing nation as a woman, as a girl, it's not a pretty thing. Yeah. And, um, and I don't know that that would have been her path, but it could have been her path. Sure. It was communicated to me that that could be a possibility. And, um, and there were two other kids who wanted to go to university desperately. One wanted to study hospitality and the other electrical engineering. And it wasn't that much you know, it wasn't that much money and I got to do it and I got to provide that for them oh, cool. to, to tweak their trajectory just a little and they'll take that and they'll run with it. But that's what money is for. So yes. That I is totally agree. That's part of my huge passion about money. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I, yeah. I, I think that's another reason I think traveling is so important because it gives you context. Oh, it opens yeah. your mind of like, 
you come back and you're like, oh, wow, this, mm -hmm. well, I'm not going to complain for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, you're so right, Brian. And it, there's another piece that Julie Nathanson always, you know, says this, not infrequently. Oh, she's so wonderful. Not infrequently. And it's such a beautiful thing, which is curiosity. Be curious. Yeah. And yes. I find that curiosity and certainty can't always coexist in the same space. And certainty is a great thing to have when you're going into a challenging situation and you want your, your compass underneath you and you want to feel really strong and confident. It's great mm -hmm. for that. But when you're talking to somebody on the other side of an argument from you or with a different opinion or a different experience from you and you're all certain, you can't be curious about what their experience is. It's that, it's that okay, um, you haven't seen it yet, but you oh, see it. Okay. It's season one. You can Got find it, it on YouTube. It. Done. Look Come up Ted, Ted Lasso darts scene. Darts scene. Got it. And you can watch it ahead of the show. And what you need to know is the really, the turd in the leather jacket with the attitude, the rich turd. <laughs> of course. He is the ex-husband of the woman wearing the suit with the blonde hair and the really tight expression on her face. Got it. Um, the young thing next to him is his new thing. Uh, of course. Um, and Ted Lasso works for is the coach for the soccer team that the blonde woman took in her divorce from the rich turd and the leather oh, jacket. Oh, okay. Because okay. It's the thing that mattered most to him in the world. Perfect. She's like, I'm going to get you. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so then watch, knowing that, watch the dark scene because it has to do with certain certainty play and curiosity play a wonderful Ooh. role in that scene. Wonderful role in that scene. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Is it, is it strange knowing that you hold a world record? <laughs> like, how often do you think about it? <laughs> I, you know, I, it's, I don't have many things from, I have about a half a dozen things from my work on my wall. And the cover of that Guinness thing is one of them. Um, it's a lovely thing. I know it's, a, I know that like all things in careers and life, it is, a, it is eventually one day or it may or may not be here, but it was, it's been mine for quite a while. And I'm yeah. very, very proud of it. You should it, be. It's cool. I also, I operate, I did one of those strengths finders tests one time about what are your strengths, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. My number one strength was achievement. Uh, my number two was empathy. Number three was restoration, then learning, then intellection. But um, the thing about having your number one thing be achievement is it's Groundhog Day every day. Right. No matter what you've accomplished, you wake up and your brain's like, well, <laughs> but, I, but I, it's like, so? It's that was yesterday. Much. Yeah, it's good match for Hollywood because that's how Hollywood works. Right. Uh, but uh, it, it's cool. I, I'm proud of it. I'm proud to share it with a gorgeous soul like Steve Bloom. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's cool. It's fun. It, it, that's actually the way my kid found out what I do for a living. Oh, really? Yeah, I never told him. Um, Perfect. Because I remember I want him, I don't, people can get swayed and dazzled by this business and I've been in it since I was a kid and it's a business and it is a, it is sometimes a hard, <laughs> cruel, uh, business that does not care about your talent or your work ethic. Yeah. Many, sure it does many, lots of the time, but there's moments when you're like, really? It's like yeah. the worst girl, girlfriend or, you know, partner you ever had. Yeah. <laughs> God, this is the worst relationship. I That's hate right. you. <laughs> I can't leave you. I hate it. That's right. Um, he has my but CDs. It, but it's also like, yeah, it's also the funnest thing. If you're like, oh my God, this is so great. You're so amazing. You know, like it's yeah. so hard. It offers all of it. And it's who you are in that relationship that determines everything. But I didn't want him dazzled or fascinated because it might take away his choice and him, his ability to hear his own inner callings. Smart. You know, and also I went to his preschool. I think he started a little Montessori thing when he was about two and a half. I think he was three. And one of his little buddies there when he was three, her dad was a big Powerpuff Girls fan. And every time we walked in, <laughs> she didn't have any interest in Shane. She would look at me and talk about the Powerpuff Girls because her dad talked about it. And so therefore mm. she, my kid wasn't who was important to her. I was, but not for any reason about me being a human or a mom sure. about the family. And there's no shade on that at all, but it doesn't, it's, that's not the place for it. Totally. My kid lit. Yep. So I never, I never talked about it. I just, mostly because I wanted him to be his own human and I didn't want to, I didn't want to take away any shine from him as, as a, as a kid being a kid among kids. Yeah. Just be a kid. So we were at dinner in Australia with some friends of ours. I was down there for a signing and we'd use that to go see friends. And 
Cool. Somebody said something about it. And I was like, oh, yeah. And <laughs> Shit. He was sitting to my left and his head just like whipped up at me like, what? You have a what? <laughs> because, well, I, you know, at the time I was doing a lot of work in real estate syndication because money matters. And I, yeah, I, I know for me in the evolution of my career, in my being, I've, it's always mattered to me, the well-being of the planet and the beings on the planet. And yes. as I learn and understand more, stupid Eddie Olmos, ah, <laughs> I, was, I was at a convention with Edward James Olmos in, I think it was 2014. And we struck up a conversation about a bunch of stuff. We bonded around the World Cup and, and then we bonded around health and food. And then we bonded around a bunch of other stuff that he opened my eyes to. I love it. It really reinforced all those weird feelings I was having in university about the corporations. And I was like, ah, oh, Jesus. Right. <laughs> uh, now I, I just know got over this <laughs> stupid information and I've been shoving it in the back of my head. And now here you come and shut up. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. So God. say we all come on, man. Shut up, Eddie. <laughs> and um, I found I, I did my own research and I, I certainly found some things that made it less possible for me to do commercials for McDonald's and pharmaceuticals. Sure companies, et cetera. And when that happens, it tends to threaten your livelihood a little bit. So um, I was like, also, I recognize that I would like to grow my money larger than I can in this business at my level of success. I know exactly what you can make at this level of success. Yeah. And it has a ceiling. And totally. I mean, Rihanna just became a billionaire, not because she's Rihanna, but because of her cosmetics company. Mm -hmm. And has his wealth from not being 50 cent, but being 50 cent and taking that over to a business place. And so yep. that, so I was looking into real estate syndication and real estate, um, you know, because I love real estate. I've always loved, it. I knew that I needed to be responsible with my money. And what am I doing going around sharing about money? If I'm not educating myself further about things to do with it. Good point. So I studied and, and investing in stocks. I'd rather stick a pen in my eye. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I talk about when I talk about money, like find a thing that you like to do. Cause I yes. spent a stupid amount of money learning about options and cut calls and puts from our time because I managed my own retirement fund. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, it's, it was a total waste of money. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a waste. Cause it was a really expensive lesson in what I hate yeah. <laughs> and we'll never do it. We'll never do it. That's right. so, but real estate. I love all that. I would, I would, I spend hours like, spreadsheets, Excel designed entire Excel, like spreadsheets and systems and went and yeah. looked at properties and talked to realtors. And I was deep in this and I showed my kid all that stuff because I know enough about him. His father's also very creative. And, and so I was like, he's going to be a super creative kid. I got to teach him about money. Yeah. <laughs> take care of himself. You know, and so he did, he knew all about the real estate stuff. He's like, I want to bid on an $8 million property. I'm like, you go, buddy. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and then so we're sitting at dinner at this thing. And he's like, wait, you what? You do what? <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I'll tell you about it later. That's and right. Then, <laughs> you know. The best way to find out. Yeah, now he's quite informed and knows. And and I actually, he, it's, I've never, I've, he's never really, he's never played a property of mine until Ratchet and Clank came out. And I was just Ooh. over the moon that he could play Ratchet and Clank. And yes, Rivet is one of my all time favorite characters I've ever done. And it was, I bet. Oh my God. It I love joy. it. It's one of the only series that I've played and beaten 100% every game. So wow. this one, I'm very, the PS5 is very elusive, but you better believe first chance I get, I, I'm in. I'm yeah. so in. It's such a, it's such a fun, it's such a fun series. Yeah. And they yeah. really go for it and just get weird and crazy. And I love that. We do. And it's, 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 you know, big and over the top in some ways, but completely grounded in reality. And that's Chris Zimmerman. Yes. That's the director. Genius. Plus the writers as well. I mean, my God, Lauren and the Falkmans and Lindsay, like Sam, the whole team, they're just, ah, oh, they're amazing. I love yeah. it. I yeah. love it. We're and in they didn't crunch age. on that game. They didn't crunch on that game. Really? Yep. Oh, they that's cool. Deliberately had a no crunch deal going on there. Did not crunch. I love that. I yeah. love finding that about the behind the scenes that there's also care. It's just yeah. great. So much care. So I'm just going to say no one has to pee either. I'm refilling my tea here. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I quiet way. Make that horrible sound. Where you're like, I got to pause. I got to pee. That's um, right. No, they're, they're the Easter eggs. If anyone can find them, <laughs> then they wage bets on who it was. <laughs> 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 I've been yakking up a storm. I'm so delightful to talk to you. What else? You know, goodness, you are a joy. This is like, I feel like I had an, I had an inclination going in that I like, I feel like, 
I feel like we're really going to be friends by the end, but you never know. <laughs> that you happened know. in the first minute. We're good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just, you know, that whole test that you took when it was like the options, mine is just nonsense all the way down. <laughs> Those are my strengths. <laughs> Connection. Well, that's the thing about skill set. going back to that is like, yeah, our, our passion is breaking down barriers and yes. connecting people, connecting yes. people with what they need. Like on there this morning, I just did a, a sort of a pre-call with this discord I'm going to go talk on because we're building this opportunity board for developers, right? Hell yeah. And and he was like, okay, so what do you charge actors when they book these? Jobs? I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Nothing. We just right. want people to connect with people who need their skills. Come yes. on. Do you yes. Know? Skills hub. You get it? Skills hub. Yeah. <laughs> That's, what we're doing. That's what we do. That's who we are. It's yeah. in the name. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love that. I love learning like because my thing is, I don't come in with questions. I have nothing. It's the interesting podcast, which is already damning myself at the beginning. Because if it's not interesting, <laughs> no just pressure. asking for it, you know. <laughs> but I, I, I look for something in a person before I ask them to come on to be like, mm. I know your work. I love your work. I'm a big fan of it. But I want to know you. Yeah. And there's things that like I'll find something, a random thing that somebody will say, and I'm like, okay, this is it. I want to talk to this person and then I go through your management to blackmail you and then you come on. And it's a process that I've learned over the years. But I, I, that's the thing that I think separates what I do from a lot of other people that do a similar thing is my show's about the person, not the work. It's like, so what was the them. thing? What was the thing? You want to know what it was, honestly? Yeah. Your braids. Seriously. Kid you not? Something, something about it. It's just a cool <laughs> thing. Like, yeah, I'm just like, what? I don't know. I can't even explain it. It's just something about, I was like, that is really, really cool. Thank I think you. I like this person. Hey, and they're then, really practical. I literally yeah. have more hair than anyone, any human being should have. <laughs> I went to the hairdresser last week, the first time in like six months. And she's like, I don't think I've ever had anyone sit in my chair with this much hair. Yeah. I was like, That's me. That's me. Right. And so they're practical. They literally keep it out of my face in a way that doesn't drive me nuts. And I, the last about three days, I'm like, good. It's so cool. Yeah, it's a, it's such a tiny thing that's so you <laughs> and like little videos you make. It's just like there's so much heart. I feel like kindred spirits and yeah. there's something about it. And I love your process and everything about it. And you're just ah, you're a blast. Thank you. You right. too. You oh, too. So you do on camera <laughs> stuff then. I do. Yeah, I've, I've been doing it for about this. This year was seven years. I've been right. at it. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I auditioned for an audio series a few years ago. And now we just started season three this year. <sighs> So I'm Fantastic. working. I'm trying. Trying my best. What's I actually no. There is no try. There is only do or not do. And you were doing. Ooh, I you see. are. You're quoting just, Star Wars to me. Is that what you're true. doing, Jennifer? Is Backed that up by brain function? Because <laughs> subconscious is quite literal. It is yeah. literal. It will execute. Like imagine you're talking to a two-year-old because they're very literal, right? Right. It will literally execute what you say. And trying is just like a hold pattern. It's a hold pattern. So you uh, want to say what you want in the present so that you're, so because then you call in the reticular formation of the brain, which is a pattern recognition system, and it will identify opportunities in a different way. It will yeah. have yes and no in different ways that back up what you want, right? Yeah. And then there's also whatever your beliefs are, the whole quantum field. And right. If you about trying that's that gets in the put it later pile of requests you know yeah uh, so do I, I like that I, yeah. i'll rephrase it, it. Right. i've been Go doing it right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've i've been doing actually i have uh i have a I short film that i'll send you that i think you'll enjoy do you like I've sad westerns i like anything west are there horses or people i'm in there is a horse and there's a person it's I'm me in. Oh, oh, I want to see. Yeah, I'd love it's to pretty. See. It'll make you sad, but also a beautiful sad. I think I you'll can, dig it. I can be with sad. One of my early mentors had this great thing he would say. He's like, look, feelings you can't be with are parts of town that you can't go to. And they make mm. your world smaller. Yeah. Facts. Can you be Facts. with any feeling? Like, are you going to die from sad? No. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. But it feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> We don't say that about happy and I can't even breathe when I'm laughing really hard sometimes. That's so that's true. closer to dying. I've almost <laughs> killed you like three times already. <laughs> you have. <laughs> and I survived because that's, that's right. what I do. Give me I'm time. like a cockroach. Give yeah. me time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, we've been talking for over an hour already. I know. I you know. did it. You did it. Look at us. You survived. You Cheers. know? <laughs> yeah. yes. You've got your world record. And survived an hour hanging out with me. Kind of the same thing <laughs> as far as achievement goes. 
I have not yet spit tea out my nose, which is That's good. right. Ah, damn it. Okay, next time. Next time. I have a goal. <laughs> life goals. Hashtag life goals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this was so fun, though. Oh, so grateful. Man. So delightful, Brian. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anytime. Before I release you into the wild, I have to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your things? Yes. Give okay. Um, the URL that I would love, invite everyone to go check out, because either they or someone they know and love is going to be into this, is acting.skillshub.com dot life. If you're a voice actor, an on-camera actor, a developer, we've got a place to post your stuff. As I've said, the opportunity board, killer forum, killer resources, even if you're not ready for coaching, phenomenal community. Um, the second thing is uh, patreon.com forward slash Jennifer Hale. It's all on there. Read about it. If it fits you, come in. If not, don't do it. Um, I am at J Hale tweets on Twitter at J Hale Graham on Instagram. And I joined TikTok recently. I'm terrible at it. I think it's three videos. <laughs> we but all I, are. And maybe J Hale talk, probably if I know me, T-O-K. Um, yeah, that's me. I'm around. Um, yeah. And mostly just Beautiful. a huge thank you to everyone out there for for listening, for being in the world and and know that you matter because you absolutely do. Yes. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. Oh, and I want to share this one thing. Yeah, please. And people have said this, right? Like there's only one you. Mm -hmm. I wish I could communicate. I got this so deeply a couple months ago. I'm going to try to work, put it into words, but these things don't always go into words. But it was like, be you because they're actually literally, truly is only one. And if you don't do it, we won't have it. So please just be just you because you really do matter because we made you. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> be you. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love it so much. Yeah. Yeah. And Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.